Uh, hi, uh, Maxim here. So today I'd like to welcome like uh, Atanasios uh, Balzis from the Comparative Bioinformatics Group uh, at the Center for uh, Genomics Regulation in Barcelona. And he's going to talk about like uh, protein fold, which is like a pipeline I'm really looking like uh, forward to hear about more. And uh, before the first release, which is uh, from what I hear like uh, coming uh, soon. So before we actually start, I'd like to thank like, the St. Jacobberg Initiative for helping us out. And uh, listeners, you will be able to unmute yourself at the end of uh, the talk for uh, questions. So, Athanasios, you're on. Thank you. Thank you, Maxim, for the nice introduction. Uh, I'm very happy today that I will present the NFCore Protein Fold Pipeline, a best practice bioinformatics pipeline for protein structure prediction. Uh, let me introduce first myself. Uh, I'm Athanasius Balzis. Uh, I'm a PhD fellow in uh, Cedric Notre Dame's lab at Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona. And uh, my thesis is uh, about uh, applications of protein structure modeling on multiple sequence alignment and phylogenetic reconstruction. And uh, this is where it connects to protein structure prediction methods because uh, uh, I am uh, very interested in all these tools uh, and I use them in my daily routine. Let's first start with the brief introduction to protein structure prediction. As you may know, uh, there, there, are, there is scarce data on experimental protein structures, uh, mainly due to technical difficulties with the already existing techniques. So uh, it is a long standing question for the community. How can we start from 1D amino acid sequence to go to a 3D structure and gain more insight into the function of the proteins? And uh, for this reason, uh, the so-called uh, protein folding problem. And for this reason, many techniques have uh, been developed uh, during uh, the last mid-century and can be categorized into two main uh, categories, the template-based methods, uh, for example, homology modeling or fold recognition, uh, which rely on already existing experimental structures that are used as templates uh, to fold the query, the, the, to fold uh, the query sequence. And so on the other hand, we, ha we have also template-free or ab initio methods. Uh, we have uh, a lot of subcategories, uh, for example, uh, molecular dynamic simulations, where we try to use physics law uh, to uh, find uh, the conformation with the lowest Gibbs energy, uh, Gibbs free energy. Uh, Fragment-based approaches such as Rosetta. And uh, lately, pairwise spatial restraint-based approaches where you use techniques uh, to predict the inter-residue contacts or the distances between uh, in, uh, into the query protein and then use them as uh, restraints in, simulate, in simulations in order to uh, get the final predicted model. Uh, however, uh, in the last year, uh, AlphaFold2 uh, achieved a major breakthrough in this field, and uh, he, it's now able to predict uh, protein structures from sequence with an unprecedented accuracy, uh, near experimental accuracy, I would say. Uh, this is mainly based uh, on the uh, incorporation of uh, deep learning uh, frameworks uh, in the field. For example, here in the figure below, you can see uh, a, a brief representation of the AlphaFold workflow where we start with an input sequence. Uh, you search genetic databases in order to form an MSA from uh, homologous sequences and convert it into a tensor. And also, on the other hand, you uh, search for structural templates in order to populate these 
pairing matrix, which actually represent uh, the inter-residue interactions of the input sequence. And uh, AlphaFold is actually, uh, consists actually of two main uh, neural network blocks, the EvoFormer, where it gets unsimpled the MSA representation and the pair representation. And actually the MSA representation tries to populate and optimize the pair representation matrix. And afterwards we have the structure module where uh, we convert these two type of tensors into a, a tensor con uh, that contains uh, the translations and rotation of uh, the model. And during the learning process, this is optimized. And finally, it gives us a final 3D structure. Uh, of course, uh, for better performance and accuracy, uh, this uh, happens uh, three times, there is a recy uh, three recycling steps. Uh, after the release of AlphaFold, the, there are several other uh, tools with uh, similar or even better accuracy and performance than AlphaFold. Uh, but uh, however, the, the problem with this software is uh, that they uh, have a lot of dependencies and mainly uh, we refer to the genetic databases you need at this step here in order to build the input multiple sequence alignment. So as many uh, uh, labs and researchers in the community try to use AlphaFold uh, in a large scale as we did, in our MSA AF2 NF pipeline, uh, we were interested in to uh, uh, develop a pipeline that uh, can take care of all these dependencies, uh, the databases, the, the alpha fold parameters, uh, in order to be able to get fast and as reproducible as possible models, predicted models. And uh, after actually the release of uh, our pipeline here, uh, we, many, many researchers got in contact with us from the academic or the private sector that were interested for a scalable AlphaFold pipeline that deals with uh, this problem with the, the dependencies. And uh, for this reason, we got in contact with uh, NFCore and uh, Secura Labs, and we collaborated in order uh, to uh, develop uh, such a scalable uh, protein structure prediction pipeline. And here we have an overview of uh, what uh, we already have at the moment. As you can see, we have four modes, mainly based on two sub workflows, the alpha fold two one and the collab fold one. But let's uh, go, uh, go through uh, this overview step by step. We start with the input sample seed, which is quite similar with uh, the uh, input that is already used in uh, the majority of NF core pipelines. But it's a bit different in the sense that uh, here we have a, a comma separated uh, file uh, with two columns. The first column is uh, the sequence header, and the second column is the path to the FASTA file. Uh, here, for monomer predictions, it is recommended to use multiple entries for each monomer sequence you want to predict. And here you have an example of uh, a FASTA file. And for multiple predictions, it is recommended uh, to use one entry with uh, corresponding to a multi-FASTA file. For example, here you have uh, this multimer and you have a look here at the multi-FASTA file containing uh, as many entries as the subunits that you want to predict for uh, this uh, multimer. Once, uh, once the pipeline checks for the validity of the input, you have two options two sub workflows. The first one is the alpha fold two sub workflow, where we first 
uh, it first passes through the prepare alpha fold to sub workflow, uh, which checks if you have provided the AF2DB parameter, which actually specifies uh, the path where the pipeline can find uh, all the databases and the parameters that AlphaFold will use if you have downloaded them. Otherwise, it uh, downloads themselves the required databases and model parameters. I would like to point out at this point that this is quite computationally expensive uh, since it has uh, to download around 2.2 terabytes. You can use alpha folds in two modes. The first one is the default one, where you just feed uh, the input CSV to the alpha fold and it computes uh, the multiple sequence, the input multiple sequence alignment and uh, does the model inference in the same process. But for the sake of computational cost, we also implemented another mode of alpha fold. We call it alpha fold split, where you uh, actually, uh, where it actually gets the uh, input CSV and the FASTA and produces the input MSA in a separate process than the model inference. And uh, if you think about it, this is quite convenient, for example, uh, in uh, cloud uh, infrastructures, uh, because uh, uh, the, this step, the AF2 prediction step, uh, requires GPU. So if you run everything, it's, uh, these two steps in the default mode uh, on GPUs, it's much more computationally expensive and it costs, uh, it costs much more other than the AF2 split. You can specify these two modes using the standard AF2 parameter here. True for the default alpha fold and false for the alpha fold split. The second sub workflow is about a collab fold run, where we have more or less a similar strategy. We have the prepare collab fold sub workflow where you can specify if you have already downloaded the databases and the required parameters of the model, you can specify the path using the collab fold DB parameter. Otherwise, it downloads uh, automatically the required databases and model parameters. And here again, uh, uh, it requires a lot of storage around 1.8 terabytes. We have two modes in the collab fold as well. Uh, the default mode is the colorful web server, where you actually depend on the uh, on a web server that uh, can run uh, the uh, M the database search and uh, MSA creation. By default, this web server is the uh, one provided by uh, MMSX uh, team, but using the parameter host URL, you can uh, specify the URL to your custom web server if you have set it up. In order to, uh, to specify the, this mode, the colorful web server, you just have to use the modes parameter. Uh, the second mode is the colorful local mode, uh, and it's uh, quite similar to the uh, alpha fold split mode we have seen in the last slide, in the sense that you first have a process to compute uh, the input multiple sequence alignment using the MMSX, and then you have a separate process for the model inference and the uh, protein uh, structure prediction. Again, you can specify it using the mode uh, parameter of the pipeline. Let's have a look at uh, some more advanced parameters. Uh, for example, uh, the use GPUs parameter when available, uh, because as I explained before, it's uh, uh, much more uh, computationally expensive uh, to use only CPUs, especially in the prediction steps. Uh, but uh, you should also, uh, uh, pay attention to the configuration profile you are using 
in combination with the GPU. So as to uh, define uh, the corresponding prediction process uh, to the uh, GPU queue or, or machines you have in your infrastructure. For example, we have uh, in uh, uh, we have uh, in the uh, GitHub repository of the pipeline uh, a CRG institutional profile that we are using at the moment, so we can have a look. Uh, then with the out dir parameter you can specify the output directory uh, this is uh, this applies for all, all the nf core pipelines uh, some specific alpha fold 2 options uh, the full db uh, the full db's parameter where you can select if you want to use uh, the full databases uh, for the uh, first part of the sequence search and the creation of the MSA, or you can use a reduced version of the databases, which means that uh, the pipeline will uh, run faster. But uh, with a bit of uh, uh, trade off in the, uh, with the accuracy of the produced model. Uh, the model preset parameter where you, you have to specify. Uh, what type of prediction you want to do and which model to use. For example, we have uh, three monomer models. The default is this one. The other two are actually uh, uh, provided by the AlphaFold 2 team uh, for reproducibility purposes. This one was used in the uh, CASP competition, CASP 14 competition, for example, or the Multimer model for Multimer predictions. Uh, regarding the collab fold uh, specific options, again, you can specify the model type, uh, the alpha fold PDM, which is the default for monomers, and two uh, multimer models. The, the most improved version is the default, the version two. Uh, you can also specify if you want to use PDB structure templates or not in the first step where you have where you populate uh, the pair representation matrix uh, you can find also some more uh, specific and detailed description uh, on the parameters available at the moment uh, in the uh, corresponding web page of the nf core protein fold pipeline regarding the output here you can see uh, the tree structure, let's say, of uh, the produced output. If you use alpha fold, you have an alpha fold uh, directory and uh, one more subdirectory with the sequence name you have provided in your CSV file that contains the computed MSAs, the unrelaxed and relaxed structures, the rank structures, uh, the raw model output, some metadata, and of course, timings. and the the first ranked model that you probably is what you want to use uh, in your research uh, that contains as well uh, uh, the PLDDT scores, uh, which is the confidence metric used by alpha folds per residue. And another directory that contains uh, sim the symbolic links to the downloaded databases and parameter files. The same applies for collab fold, where you have an, out, uh, an output directory depending on the, uh, on the mode you have selected, collab fold web server or collab fold lockout, that again contains all this information we have explained uh, for alpha fold and the symbolic links to the downloaded databases. Uh, of course, as uh, in all the NF core. Uh, pipelines. Uh, there is a directory with uh, the pipeline info, execution, trace files, and so on. So what are the next steps? Uh, we are now uh, at uh, this point that uh, we have to set up and run uh, the AWS full tests in order to create the first release of the pipeline. Uh, in the future releases, uh, we are planning to, one, to add more open source protein structure prediction tools, such as OpenFold, uh, or even 
uh, a newer generation of uh, prediction to tools such as ESM fold uh, or Omega fold that use protein language models. And uh, for this reason, uh, they are more or less uh, an order of magnitude faster uh, than alpha fold, collab fold, and uh, but uh, without uh, losing accuracy. Uh, in fact, they ha they have uh, the same levels or even better uh, levels of accuracy. Uh, we are also interested in incorporating more advanced software for protein-protein interaction, such as Foldoc, because uh, uh, there are plenty of researchers interested in uh, predicting uh, 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 advanced uh, multimers. And, uh, uh, and uh, moreover, uh, to add to uh, solve bug fixes and uh, add more optimizations. Uh, upon request. Uh, we are uh, very, uh, very open to contributions and ideas uh, in order uh, to improve even more the pipeline and adapt it to the needs of the community. Uh, so please do not hesitate to contact us and uh, uh, propose or contribute to the already existing repository. Uh, at this point, before finishing, I would like uh, to thank my colleagues, first from uh, the Notre Dame lab, uh, Jose Espinosa and Luisa Santu, uh, that uh, uh, are contributing to this pipeline, uh, as well uh, Sequera Labs and especially Harsil Patel uh, for all the guidance and the help uh, during the implementation process. And uh, uh, the collaborators from the Interline Therapeutics, especially Norma Gudakru and uh, Wally Dosman, uh, for testing the pipeline uh, in the cloud. So thank you for your attention. And uh, I would be very happy to answer if you have any question. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for the amazing uh, talk. So I will allow everyone to unmute themselves. Uh, if anyone has any question, uh, please uh, let's go. Uh, otherwise, I think I have like one question. So at the moment, you just have like uh, alpha fold two, right? And you're planning to add like more uh, more tools, but not in this first release, but in the coming one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yes. That's it. And yes, and I assume that the main issue with like having more tool is that it's a lot of databases that you need as an input. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Uh, that's true because uh, uh, each tool uses its uh, own databases, let's say. So you need a lot of storage to be able to test everything or even to compare between tools. Mm -hmm. May I ask along this line, so you basically retrain the model every time you run the pipeline or at least like every time institution retrains their model from scratch or do you use pre-trained models? Uh, we use pre-trained models. We just download the already provided models by AlphaFold or CollabFold, let's say. And it still takes these huge databases. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is separate from the training process. Uh, these databases are needed in order to create the input multiple sequence alignment. To actually have uh, uh, this homolog all this uh, uh, bunch of homologous sequences, in order for the model to be able to find all the correlations, uh, the interested correlations, and form the final model. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we are good with the number of questions. So uh, thanks again, Tanajos. Uh, that was like an amazing talk. Now I'm like super happy to have learned more about it, and I'm really uh, hoping like to to see this release like uh, coming. So thank you. thank you all again, everyone. And I will stop the recording.